Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about how to write parametric equations to go around a square. So the square is that little picture down in the bottom corner there. So let's get started. Um, so here's our square, and we're gonna go this way around it. So we're going counterclockwise. Um, and we're gonna assume uh, that each of these is at five. So five uh, on the X, five on the Y, negative five, and then uh, that should be negative five down there, but I accidentally wrote five. All right, so let's also assume that it's gonna take us four seconds per edge. So to go from five zero to zero five is gonna take four seconds, and then to go from zero five to negative five zero is gonna take four seconds and so on. So that's kind of our setup. So um, I'm gonna calculate delta X's and delta Y's. So from this, I'm starting at five zero and I'm ending up at zero five, which means my delta X, um, I end at zero, I started at five, so my delta X is negative five. I started at zero for Y and ended at positive five, so my delta Y is gonna be five minus zero or five. And then all the delta X and delta Y's are actually like plus or minus five, so you can kind of fill them in quickly here. Um, to On that second edge, uh, we go from X equals zero to X equals negative five, so I have to lose five. So delta x is negative five. Um, y has to go from five to zero, so I have to lose five there, so my delta y is uh, negative five. And then uh, on this next edge, I have to go from negative five to zero for x, so I have to gain five. And y has to go from zero to negative five, so I have to lose five. And then here on the final edge, uh, x has to go from zero to five, so I have to gain five. And y has to go from negative five up to zero, so it has to gain five. So we have all of our delta x's and delta y's. Delta t is just gonna be four because it takes four seconds per edge. But if it takes four seconds per edge, I also wanna kind of figure out where I am and when. So if I start at five zero, I'm gonna be there at t equals zero. Then I'll be up at this point at t equals four because it took me four seconds for that edge. I'll be over at this corner at t equals eight because again, four seconds. I'll be down here at t equals 12 and then I'm gonna get back to the original starting point um, at t equals 16. So it takes me 16 uh, seconds or units of time to go all the way around this. All right, so from here I can write equations for each of the edges. The first one is going from zero to four, so it's gonna be the easiest of the equations to write. So one, two, three, and four, and we're gonna deal with edge one. Okay, so this one goes from t equals zero to t equals four. So we set it up and then x, the initial x value is five, and then uh, it's gonna be plus, and then my rate for x, the x rate of change is delta x over delta t, so negative five over four. And then it's just gonna be, um, since we're starting at zero, I don't really need to offset the time, but I'm gonna write it as the quantity t minus zero, just so this looks exactly the same as all the other edges. And let's do y. So y starts at zero um, plus, Delta y over delta t is five over four. You're gonna see a lot of five over fours here. And then the same t minus zero. And for this edge, I'm gonna say that it includes zero and includes four. So uh, when t is zero to four. So I've used uh, less than or equal to in both cases. Um, all right, let's move on to the second edge. So for the second edge, so the only thing to keep in mind, well, I mean, it has a different starting time, right? So we're between t equals four and t equals eight. And I already included t equals four in my first edge, so I don't really want to include it here when I state the time interval. So let's get started. So x, the initial x is zero. Um, the rate of change is negative five over four. It's delta x over delta t. And then uh, since the time we hit this edge is four, I need to do the quantity t minus four, and then do the same for y. So we're gonna start at five and then plus Delta y over delta t is negative 5 fourths, and then t minus 4. And then this edge, we already used 4, so instead of doing 4 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 8, I'm just going to do 4 is less than, so less than t is less than or equal to 8. And that's because I don't want to double count 4. Um, edge 3. So at this point, it's basically going to be the same thing, right? So uh, we need our initial x, so we're starting at negative 5. And then our change in x is five, change in time is four, so it's gonna be plus five over four. And then uh, we're starting, we hit this edge at t equals eight. 
Um, so we want to offset our time by eight. So it's going to be the quantity t minus eight. And now we'll do y. So y starts at zero. Uh, you get delta y is negative five. And then delta t is four. So negative five over four. Quantity t minus eight again. And for our time, we already used eight. So we're just going to go eight is less than t less than or equal to 12. And that'll put us on this edge. All right. And then our final edge looks like this. So we start at x equals 0 plus uh, delta x over delta t, so 5 fourths. And then we hit this edge at t equals 12. So we need to offset the time by 12. So t minus 12. And then y equals our initial y is going to be negative 5 plus uh, delta y over delta t is 5 fourths. And then t minus 12 again. And for our time interval, we already included 12. So I'm going to say 12 is less than t. And then because I just want to get to the end, I don't want to like actually duplicate it. I'm just going to say uh, 12 is less than t is less than 16. Because at 16, I'm back where I started at 0. The reason I'm doing that is that I then took these equations and put them into GeoGebra. So I'm not going to show you the sketch that I created, although I'll probably link it um, in the description. Uh, I am going to show you the equations that I typed in. So I defined a, a curve for, so A is the first edge, and then B is the second edge. So I defined those. I defined the third edge and the fourth edge. And then I had to do something a little weird because I wanted it to just keep going around this thing. So what I did was I created a slider that goes from 0 to 192, um, which is a multiple of 16. Then I created, uh, I, we haven't really talked about this, um, I created a little function that's taking uh, uh, v mod 16. So mod returns the remainder when you divide v by 16. So it's always going to return something between 0 and 16, but not including 16, because the remainder when you divide 16 by 16 is um, 0. So it's always the remainder when you divide v by 16. So if v is a perfect multiple of 16, you'll always get 0 out of this. And then I set up a little if statement, well, a long if statement, a bunch of nested if statements. Um, and if you want, you can just type those in. And you will see that when you hit animate on the slider, it's going to go around the square and then just keep going around the square. So it's pretty neat. Um, and that's about it. So look in the description for a link to the sketch that I created. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.